Hi, today I have a problem for you, and this problem is uh, rather simple, but uh, probably not everyone would be able to solve it because there are some tricks. And uh, after I show you how to solve it step by step, you would find that uh, solution would be very easy because every step would be easy. So um, here is a problem: albinism, white body color pink eyes, that is um, small c, is uh, recessive to the presence of the color that is capital C in mice, and black, that is capital B, is dominant to brown, that is small b, in the presence of the color capital C gene. What ratio of uh, color types would you expect to see in the F2 generation of cross that is uh, P generation or parent generation of the small c, small c, capital B, capital B, that is albina, to uh, capital C, capital C, and small b, small b, that is brown mice. So, in order to solve this problem, we have uh, just to uh, start to solve it step by step. And first of all, I want to bring your attention to uh, first step, and this is uh, parent generation that we start with. And parent generation, we have two mice. One is albina, that is uh, small c, small c, and capital B, capital B. And we have to cross it with um, brown mice, that is capital C, capital C, small b, small b. So what, what we do, uh, we have to uh, start with crossing these two parents, one is albina and in another one is brown, and uh, what is the outcome of such cross? This is uh, very easy to solve, because for example, when we cross uh, these two alleles, for example, we can build a Punnett square, and as you see here, we will have capital C and small c, capital C and small c, capital C, small c, and capital C, small c. So all the progeny or F1 generation would be uh, heterozygous for the um, presence of color. And if we cross these two alleles also, uh, we will get results that uh, the same, analogous, that would be capital B and small b. So this is would be F1 generation, and this is parent generation, and uh, F2 generation. Uh, in order to get F2 generation, we have to uh, self-cross this F1 generation, so we have to cross it to the same genotype. And what we are going to get? And now um, we don't need uh, to build a Punnett square in order to predict what kind of uh, gametes such cross may produce. For example, here, uh, first type of gametes would be uh, capital C and uh, so I, I would start to build the Punnett square, so it's going to be capital C and capital B. Uh, second possible gamut, this is going to be capital C and small b, capital C and small b, and third type of gamut would be small c and capital B. And third type of gametes would be small c, small b. And this is going to be uh, um, po all possible gametes for the parent 1. And parent 2 is uh, absolutely the same genotype. So parent 2 also would have the same uh, gametes. So it's going to be capital C, capital B, capital C, 
small b, small c, capital B, and small c, small b. Now we have to build the Punnett square once again, and we would have 16 cells. So when we cross these two parents of the same genotype, these four types of gametes would produce 16 types of uh, genotypes. And let's now see what those genotypes and what kind of phenotypes they produce. So here we would have, as you see, capital C here and capital C here. So we put capital C, capital C. And also we see that capital B here and capital B here. So they would combine and would produce capital B, capital B here. And in this cell we would put capital C, capital C, small b, and capital B. Small c here, capital C here, capital B here, and capital B here. Small c here, capital C here, small b here, and capital B. So in this cell we have capital C, capital C, capital B, small b, capital C, capital C, small b, small b, small c, capital C, capital B, small b, small c, capital C, and small b, small b. Uh, here we have capital C, small c, capital B, capital B, capital C, small c, small b, capital B, and small c, small c, capital B, capital B, small c, small c, small b, capital B, and the last column, capital C, small c, capital B, small b, capital C, small c, small b, small b, and small c here, small c here, capital B, small c, and the last, capital, uh, small c, small c, small b, small b. So now we have all 16 genotypes, and now uh, the question is, uh, what ratio, so uh, what ratio of the color types would you expect to see in the F2 generation? So um, let's take a look at our problem. And we told that uh, albinism is a white body color, pink eyes, uh, that is small c is recessive to the presence uh, of the color capital C in mice. So uh, what different uh, phenotypes that we might have here? We might have, uh, for example, um, capital C, and no matter uh, if uh, the next allele would be small c or capital C, uh, we also may have capital B, and no, mat no matter what is the second uh, allele would be, whether it is uh, uh, capital B or small b, this would produce black uh, phenotype. Because as you see, capital C means that color is present, and capital B is dominant over the small b, and that means black color. Second phenotype that we may have, we may also have capital C uh, and blank space uh, small b, small b. And as you see, in the presence of the color and no capital B that stands for the black, we have here a homozygous recessive color and that means that this phenotype would 
uh, stand for the brown. So we put brown here. And uh, third phenotype we may have small c, small c, and uh, capital B blank space. This would be albino. Uh, as you see, we have here capital B that stands for the black color, but uh, we also have homozygous condition here that uh, stands for the absence of color. So uh, black would be uh, expressed, as you see here. Uh, black, that is capital B, is dominant to the brown, that is small b, in the presence of the color, that is capital C gene. So if no capital C gene, then uh, black color wouldn't be able to produce, and that would be uh, albino. And the last uh, possible phenotype would be um, small c, small c, and small b, small b. And this also would be albino. Because we have here uh, absence of color and homozygous condition for the uh, black color. So, um, if uh, here would be capital C, as you see, this would be brown color. So, this for uh, possible uh, genotypes, and here, as you can see, can be capital C or small c, capital B or small b, uh, but still, this would be black. So, I, I can add a few lines here with uh, different possibilities like uh, in this line and um, some more possibilities uh, that this uh, line represents. But this is short abbreviation and um, you should know how to use it uh, in order to save a space. So let's now count uh, how many different genotypes uh, that we have because we ask it what ratio of the color types would you expect to see in the F2 generation. And this is F2 generation that we cross it, and we got uh, 16 uh, different genotypes, but it doesn't mean that we are going to get 16 phenotypes. So let's count uh, how many phenotypes do we have. And because I have, I'm using uh, black uh, background, I cannot use uh, black uh, pencil, so I would use red color. For the black, so let's start counting. And uh, this cell would give us uh, black color because we have here presence of the color that is capital C, and we have two capital C's here, and we have uh, capital B here. We have two capital B's here, but uh, only one would be enough to code for the black color. Only one. Capital C is enough and one capital B is enough. So this is same what we have here. So this is going to be black. Next cell would be also black. Because we have uh, capital C and capital B present. And this is what we have here. Um, next we have uh, capital C and capital B. So it's also going to be black. And this also going to be blank. Uh, black and this also going to be black and uh, here as you see we have uh, different situation when we have presence of color and absence of the black so we have homozygous uh, a small b and that means uh, that uh, this is brown we have presence of color, but we don't have black, that is capital B. So uh, small b would stand for the brown. So this is going to be brown. I would use uh, um, blue color for this. And uh, next cell we have, once again, black, capital C and capital B present. And here we 
once again have a brown capital C is present that stands for uh, presence of color but uh, we have two uh, small b's so this is going to be uh, brown so this is what we have here and next we have also black color is present capital C and we have two capital B and this is also going to be black and here we have absence of color as you see we have a small c small c and no no matter that uh, we have uh, capital B and capital B uh, we still wouldn't have color so this is going to be albina and I would use yellow color here and albina we would have here also because we have small c small c here and here we would have black and uh, in this cell next cell we would have uh, brown we have presence of color and homozygous condition for the uh, uh, brown so uh, this is going to be brown and next cell we would have as you see uh, absence of color so this is going to be albino and we use yellow for albino and the last cell also would be albino so now we are just left uh, last step we have to count our ratios and let's count black first 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 so we have 9 uh, black so we can put 9 here uh, let's now count brown we have uh, 1, 2, 3 we have 3 brown mice and we have uh, one, two, three, four uh, albino. So we have three albinos that are going to be this genotype. And you see here we have um, homozygous condition for the color and capital B present, homozygous condition for the color and capital B present, homozygous condition for the color and capital B present. So three that uh, would meet the requirement of this phenotype and one that would be albina here that would be homozygous recessive for both presence of color and uh, for the black color so uh, two small b's would means uh, brown so we have one condition here and uh, total uh, ratio would be uh, 9, 2, 3, 2, 4. So we combine last uh, 3 and 1 uh, together because this is going to be the same phenotype. So here is uh, our ratio and this is going to be our answer. So I hope my uh, explanation was clear enough. And now you would be able to solve uh, many analogous problems. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe to my new videos that I post almost every day. Goodbye.